Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about the Old World, or at least something quite related to it. As every now and then I do hear a bunch of rumours from various different sources, various different websites, and I don't cover them all, I'll be very honest with you, mostly because I tend to go through the ones that just sounds the most realistic, right? For example, base sizes. I talked about this a while before Games Workshop confirmed it, and yes, base sizes are increasing. The starter kit is going to be Tomb Kings versus Bretonians. It's pretty much confirmed at this point, whereas a bunch of other people were going, oh, there's no starter kit, or it's Orcs and Goblins. But yeah, no, it's Tomb Kings and Bretonians at this point. And now I've been hearing some rather interesting rumours about the potential future of Warhammer the Old World in the form of a minigame. It doesn't need too much of an introduction, but this is Mordheim, a game that was centred around Warhammer fantasy. Bellacor was basically the big bad. A bunch of stuff happened where lots of factions were churning to Mordheim after it was destroyed by a giant warpstone meteor, which had lots of weird stone all over the place. That was what warp Stone was called for that. A lot of factions were represented, the main being, you know, centered around that area. So, uh, vampires, uh, chaos cards, empires, witch hunters, even, for example, the Sisters of Sigmar too. But there were a few supplements which add a little bit more to it, and yeah, it was fairly well received. The fan base and former developers have actually kept that game alive through a site known as Broheim, and it's actually fairly common, especially if you're in the UK, to come across Mordheim events on Facebook and so on that you can take part in yourself, physically at different stores or halls, depending on the size of the event itself. For those not aware, gameplay-wise, Mordheim was very different to Warhammer Fantasy in general, as you weren't really playing with armies, but rather a squad of warriors that you built up, you upgraded throughout your campaign and so on, as uh, through matches you'd be able to get more gold that you'd be able to spend on your units, give them new equipment. You did have to spend a lot of time kit bashing stuff, but it really gave you that warband feel. This wasn't an army, this was a group of adventurers more than anything else. Games were usually 30 minutes to an hour as opposed to the longer form games of Warhammer, and yeah, it was no big cost barring creating your own table, which I think is probably what you spent the most money on. Alright, so we got a bunch of context out of the way, and the general rumour now is that Games Workshop have been looking at a way to reintroduce Mordheim into the setting. Again, timelines do match up, and it does make sense to add in a minigame to be able to sell the game to players. The introduction of Mordheim will be able to bring people in to the Warhammer Fantasy setting at a much lower cost and kind of push them to getting into Warhammer the Old World too. As there has been some general success with, say for example, Warhammer on the Worlds and uh, Warcry doing that for Age of Sigmar, and Kill Team, well the newest iteration of Kill Team doing that for Warhammer 40k. Those models are cross-compatible, and it does lead to a lot of people trying out the cheaper alternative first before getting into the main titles, which, to be honest, yes, is a very smart thing to do. Plus, we've been able to see some interesting stuff, especially when it comes to Kill Team, as it's been reintroducing a lot of long-lost miniatures, obviously redesigned, but it definitely has fleshed out the 40k armies quite a bit too. Mostly for God, though, but uh, let's be honest, the God kind of needed a little bit more variety. Games Workshop have actually been updating and bringing back older mini games as time has progressed. Uh, quite a while ago, we had the reimagining of Necromunda. Necromunda has been getting a lot of expansion since then. I'm not sure how Necromunda as a game is doing too much ever since the announcement of the whole outdoor stuff. I've not been able to play that stuff yet. And uh, obviously Kill Team is the biggest one as it was out of the way for a while. There have also been very loud rumours that Epic is coming back this year under a different name apparently, but different creators are apparently saying different names. And the rumours about Epic are that it's going to be around this year. I've heard that uh, August, September more or less makes a lot of sense. It does depend. Obviously Leviathan for 10th edition's launch is coming out. I believe tomorrow actually by the time of recording this video. So it would take a while to then start hinting for Epic. Even then, Games Workshop have already started hinting towards Epic in regards to its re-release, I believe around Warhammerfest actually. And that's important to note because obviously we shouldn't really expect Mordheim this year, even alongside the launch of Warhammer the Old World, which the general rumor for that, by the way, is that we'll get a soft launch now and a hard launch in 2024. 
but that's been something that we've already discussed in previous videos, so I don't want to keep too much on that. Instead, I imagine that not a lot of work has actually been done in Mordheim, it's just general discussion by developers in the thought of bringing it back, as right now we know that Games Workshop are probably busy with everything else that needs to be done. We know the first nine factions for Warhammer the Old World, and that's going to be basically Wave 1. All the factions are getting rules, but these are the ones that are going to get their own army books and possibly new miniatures, and eventually, if this does well, we move on to Wave 2 with the remaining armies. The only way we'll see a Wave 2 is if Wave 1 is successful, and I imagine that once Wave 2 is already hitting, this would be around two to three years down the line, as I believe three years is the average for new additions. I'm not 100% too sure lately because, in theory, next year should also be 4th edition for Age of Sigmar, which really, Games Workshop should start moving to a 4 year per edition run. That's just kind of unrelated to Old World and everything, it's just more the case that uh, there's a lot of problems coming out in a lot of recent army books uh, for 40k, Age of Sigmar and so on, because it's clear there's not been enough playtesting. More time coming back could be great for Warhammer the Old World and just in general for Warhammer fans because it would allow more accessibility for people to come in. Not only that, but it was a fantastic game. It um, was pretty broken in certain cases, for example, and I know a few people are going to hate me as soon as I say this, but I played Skaven Slinger squads, and uh, yeah, they were a bit OP. There's other types of factions there that were a bit horrendous, depending on how you built them up. The Shadow Warrior one was pretty interesting, because it was pretty much just like four heroes, and that's it. So it would be good to see it come back, revisited by Games Workshop, kind of similar to what they've done with Kill Team, where they've gotten the original book and then just updated it too. I think they did the very same with Necromunda, and there are rumors that it's going to be the same thing with Warhammer the Old World, where they're looking at older army books and just bringing them into a fresh uh, light, I guess. Because the grand majority of systems when it came to Mordheim are perfectly fine, you know, building up a warband, upgrading them, uh, your limits here and there, just certain equipment should be limited, obviously. Combat, terrain, all that stuff was incredible. It was very stylized. If you guys want, I'll do a proper deep dive on Mordheim and what made it so special. But I think that honestly that is fine, they just can update that, bring in some new models, obviously. And, um... Yeah, some new factions every now and then would be great. If it got the same attention that, say, Kill Team, Underworlds, and Warcry got, it would be freaking amazing. And they could use Mordheim as a basic setting, but also expand upon it, you know, take it to different locations and so on. Uh, yes, it would be outside of Mordheim, but the idea would be to allow for a lot more fluff. Who knows, maybe the name could be changed, considering that Epic is likely going to have a different name, we'll find out later this year. So, Mordheim could also be renamed, and Mordheim itself being one of the books for this new thing. Obviously, it's important to note that this is a rumor, we don't know if it's going to be true or not. Mind you, a lot of these rumors end up being kind of true. It's very, very faint right now, so I imagine that things will pick up after the first launch of the Old World stuff, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to see the remake of Mordheim. I would love to see this back. It'd be nice to see terrain boxes and, you know, to the level that we're getting this standard nowadays from Games Workshop, new warbands, new factions. It'd just be kind of cool. Plus, if anything's going to come back alongside Warhammer the Old World, you know, with Warhammer Fantasy, it's going to have to be Mordheim. I don't know if I'd like to see Mana War back, in all honesty, but Mordheim, yeah, Mordheim seems kind of logical. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. Uh, it's kind of funny that these rumors started, like, really getting loud, because I've only just recently started doing some videos on Mordheim lore. Uh, there's another one that might come out tomorrow, I'm not 100% sure yet, but it was the idea of... Yeah, I kind of wanted to talk, because why not? But yeah, have a nice day, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.